This is JS Party, your weekly celebration of JavaScript and the web. Are you missing out on the changelog newsletter? Every Monday, I curate, contextualize, package up, and email you the developer news worth your attention. It's a totally free way to keep up with the fast pace of the software world the easy way. Sign up today at changelog.com slash news. Big thanks to our partners, fasty.com, fly.io, and typesense.org. Okay, hey, it's party time, y'all. What's up, friends? I'm here with James Cowling, co-founder and CTO at Convex. They're one of our new sponsors, and they're building a full-stack platform for the TypeScript era. So, James, you have some awesome docs for Convex, and inside those docs is a document that sort of describes the entire world, the entire thinking, the framework of Convex. It's called the Zen of Convex. Can you describe that for me? From my time building large-scale applications, I believe very strongly that there are a certain set of abstractions, primitives, and ways of solving problems that make life easy forever, and they compound in positive ways, and ways to solve problems that make life worse every day. And the things, you know, everyone can recognize these things. What makes life easy is clean abstractions, information hiding, composability. What makes life hard is conditionals, you know, checks everywhere, corner cases. Now, the Zen of Convex is about how to build applications in a way that scales for you. And in Convex specifically, one key component of that is influenced actually quite a lot by languages like Haskell. To think in terms of transactions, everything is a transaction. You don't have to think about functions interacting with each other because they're transactional. Think in terms of deterministic execution, so functions that are deterministic, so they can get replayed, they can get cached, and if any of the inputs to that function changes, we can push those functions in real time, the result, the new results of those functions to you in real time over a web socket. So the Zen of Convex is about thinking about the kind of ways of building an application that are going to pay dividends to you in the long run. Now, you can use Convex and completely ignore the Zen if you want, right? You can use Convex just as a, as a workhorse tool. But we think the framework's designed in such a way that it encourages you to do things in the right way and in a way that will scale and a way that will make life simple for you in the long run. Okay. If you're looking for a better type of backend, Convex is the full stack TypeScript development platform you've been looking for. Replace your database, server functions, and glue code. Get started at convex.dev. That's C O N V E X.dev. Again, convex.dev. your internet friends. I'm Jared, and I am joined today by Nick Nisi. What's up, Nick? Hoi hoi. How's it going? It's going great. We also have Amel here with us today. What's up, Amel? Hey, hey. Happy to be here. And like a phoenix rising from the ashes, it's Bone Skull's grand return to the pod. Welcome back, Chris. Yay. Hi, everybody. Woo. I'm glad to have me here. Yes. Are you excited to be here today? Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> glad to have me here. <laughs> we are also glad to have you here. Glad to have all of us here today for a fun segments episode. It's been a minute since we've been able to just hang out, talk, play games, and be ridiculous. And so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to start off with things in the news, most of which are about Astro. So Astro making news this week and on two fronts, the more exciting one and then uh, the more insider one. We'll start with the excitement because that's our keyword, isn't it, Nick? Astro 3.0 dropped. What date was this? August 30th. Yesterday as we record, a week ago as you listen. And it's the first major web framework to support the View Transitions API. This seems like a pretty cool deal, right? View Transitions. What do y'all think? What is that? All right. Chris wants to know. I'm going to go. So it, it's an API that basically allows you to like add hooks so that when your page loads or, or when you're changing your page, like you can gracefully exit out, right? So, you know, like when you're using a mobile native mobile application, you know, that like ease when you're like swiping, think of Tinder, ladies and gentlemen, you know, swipe right, swipe left, you know, that, that ease, that grace in and out, right? So you can um, basically hook into 
that event so that you can insert this graceful animation. And so now uh, for a long time, developers were kind of monkey patching this kind of experience into their applications and the good folks um, at W3C. W3C. Yeah, it's not Wattwig. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess it's probably, it, there is probably some Wattwig collaboration if I had to guess, but they have now put this into the browser. So there, it's called a View Transitions API. We'll put the MDN, um, MDN link in the show notes and it's only available right now on Chromium browsers. So Safari, um, and Firefox don't have this yet. It's still uh, an experimental API, but you know, very exciting like to see it like go through the standards process and hopefully get adopted across the board. Yeah, and the cool thing about it is that it really like like I think that it, what's what's happening with it is that it like snapshots the current view and then lets you manipulate that while it changes to a new view so that you can have some kind of star wipe or whatever you want. I don't know if you can do a star wipe, but I want to do a star wipe. I don't even know what a star wipe is, but I want one. Well, well yeah, for, I think for a long time, you couldn't do this on like server rendered apps. Like, uh, you know, if you're like loading your pages from the server, but now because this is built into the right. browser, you can, and like Astro is able to leverage that. So this will work, works for, you know, single page apps as well as like multi-page apps, which is very exciting. Yes, this was one of the common reasons why you would require a single page app was to have this kind of transition between views that you can manipulate to look cool and seamless and fast and smooth and all these things, star wipes and whatnot. Tinder swipes. No longer needed. No longer needed. <laughs> I just have to explain right? that. Yeah, please do, because I don't even know what it is still. I just like saying it. I mean, it's, it's like it, you know, it flashes to a star or it like zooms into a star, which is the new view, but it has like a star outline. Uh, the reference as with every reference that I have is an old Simpsons one where Homer and Lisa are making a dating video for Ned Flanders and Homer just keeps asking Lisa to add star wipes. Okay, from here we star wipe to a glamour shot of Flanders paying his bills. Then we star wipe to Flanders brushing his... Dad, there are other wipes besides star wipes. Why eat hamburger when you can have steak? I'm taking my name off this thing. <laughs> So nicknisi.org is going to be just covered in star wipes here soon. <laughs> the nice thing about an API like this is they just, it's just additive, right? Like if it, if your browser doesn't support view transitions, well, then you just do the traditional switch the page UI. So One might even call that a progressive app. It's like a progressive <laughs> enhancement. Yeah. So if you don't have it, it doesn't matter as a developer, you can put this into your, your websites today and as people's browsers upgrade they will get the star wipe. Uh, Chrome supports it, Edge, Opera, Chrome for Android, and Arc browser, which is not listed on the caniuse.com website. And Samsung internet browser too. So if you have a lot of customers in Germany, okay. you know, I think like it's almost like 70% of Germans use Samsung internet browser. So <laughs> mm. you'll have some happy customers. So that's what View Transitions API is. Chris, are you... Are you for or against? What do you think? I don't have an opinion, but that sounds cool or sorry that happened. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He's going to stay on the fence. Well, the thing that we're talking about today is not necessarily the API's existence. It's Astro's 3.0 has now built in use of this API you know, right into it. So as browsers add support, if you're using Astro and you're upgraded, I don't know if you have to like recode gen with Astro or if you just upgrade and use then you just magically get this out of the box. And I'm sure there's nice ergonomics and all that so that you can have it. Of course, everybody can use it by hand if they want to, right? It's a podcast, folks. Head nods do not go over super well. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nick and Amel nodding furiously. What else in Astro 3.0? 30% faster, something like this? Mm -hmm. Anybody else check out the, the blog post? 30 to 75% faster rendering performance. Yeah, that's that's huge. Um, it seems like they started a refactoring effort that they continued, like they started a refactoring effort in 2.1 and they continued that into the 3.0 release. And so it's been it's very cool to see that. So is this a, a framework you all use? I do. What do you use it for? NickNisi.com. Oh, it's .com? Sorry. Oh, very, very popular. I said .org. You got a redirect set up? Not yet. I have Nisi.org. Oh, that's there. right. Nick at Nisi.org. Gosh. Go ahead, Amel. Yeah, no, I just I I have I'm I'm I have a really embarrassing ancient old website that's like I don't know like ten years old, and I'm rebuilding my personal website with Astro, and you know I was yeah I was gonna go the purest route I was gonna just for the 
like bits and giggles, just like use no framework for this. But now I feel so compelled like to, to do this in Astro. I'm like, you know, I have like really, I'm so picky about like what I, like I have very limited free time. And so I can't like play around with every single new technology. And so I'm very picky about what I will invest time in. And Astro has really like, it's met the bar and then some, so very excited. Yeah, I switched to it in Astro 2. And the reason I did was, I, I liked some of the things that it was doing, but like I, I got baited and switched on it a little bit because I was like, oh, you know, I'm a React developer. I like, you know, building components like that. I can just use React because that's like the big appeal of this. You could use React, Vue, Svelte components and intermingle them all together. And then I started rebuilding my site in it and I was like, oh, wait, this doesn't need to be a React component. It could just be an Astro component. And then all of a sudden everything is an Astro component and I have no React in there, which is awesome. Mm. But yeah, it's it's a really it's cool. It's like you baited and switched yourself <laughs> on that one, Nick. I, I mean, did. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's like I'm going to switch these to Astro and get angry about it. That does sound cool. I'm not using it. Well, I have like plans for new websites and one of my favorite things in life is to not start those things, but to just sit around and wait. And every time a new framework upgrades, be like, oh, this is the one I'm going to use. And so right now I'm totally going to use Astro 3.0. Yeah. When I start this new static website, but uh, by the time I actually start it, it could be a completely different framework. Who knows? Astro 10.0. The SSR enhancements are also very exciting. I thought this was like really cool because um, it, it kind of also touches performance improvements as well. So they've added support for per route code splitting, which for a multi-page app is like huge and very exciting. So you're getting to kind of dynamically, you know, send stuff up, you know, and kind of improve your performance as a result of that. Like that's huge, less bytes over the wire, all good stuff. Um, and then they have edge middleware. That, so you can now bundle your middleware for deployment on the edge, which is, I think is interesting. I'd love to like, I don't know if you all have examples of when or why people could would be doing that kind of stuff. I, I personally don't, so I'm I'm eager to hear any thoughts that you have on that. And lastly, they have um, support for host customization, which I thought was also very, very exciting because you basically it's kind of like similar to kind of the per route code splitting, all right? Like you're you're able to kind of send a dynamic like bundle up based on if that you're, you know, using an AWS, like depending on like where you're rendering and what your rendering like platform is, uh, and as well as like your compute engine. So it's very, um, very cool. I think the, the benefit of edge middleware would be like dynamically generating content that is as close to your user mm. as possible. So on the edge and just much faster speeds when doing that. Another tidbit that is uh, totally not, um, uh, useful in any way, but I thought was kind of cool. And shout out to Chantastic for pointing it out on Twitter and uh, me seeing that, I guess. Uh, they changed the default port for the Astro Dev Server to 4321, which is like a, a countdown to liftoff mm. to continue the theme. That is huge. That's the biggest innovation since the 1234 <laughs> count up, which was also innovative, but nowhere near as exciting. Speaking of nowhere near as exciting, there was also some back-end kind of business announcements mm. coming out of Astro and Vercel just a few days prior to the 3.0 launch. This is a official hosting partner. So Vercel now is going to be supporting Astro development to the tune of $5,000 each month towards the ongoing maintenance and development. And in turn... Astro will be, I guess, just saying use or sell with us, or I, I don't know exactly what Astro is going to be doing on their side of this deal, but they've they've named Vercel as an official hosting partner. Chris, hot takes on this partnership between an open source project and a hosting provider. Look, I don't know if anybody heard about Gatsby. Have we heard about Gatsby? You know, they got they got bought by Netlify, right? Tell us. And uh, ap apparently they've they've laid everybody off and, and shut down the project. So I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm like, what's preventing that from happening with this thing? Like, is, is Netlify going to go buy it and shut it down? Is Cloudflare going to do the same thing? Well, it's a partnership, not ownership in this case. No, it's it doesn't have anything to do with that. Like, I'm, that's great that they're getting money from Vercel. Like, Maybe that is going to pay 
you know, people who don't work at this Astro company for, for their contributions to Astro. And I think that's great. I'm glad that those people are getting paid because otherwise they're being exploited. So like, what's to stop another Gatsby from happening here? And it, it just, it, it confounds me like why people like go and they, they want to pick up these frameworks like this, which is, I don't know if this is a VC funded company or not, but like it, it's, uh, you need to be a lot more careful like about, about these technology choices. Like it's one thing to to buy like a, a SaaS service or something, but it's another thing to, to build your whole like website and your whole like product based on a on a on a framework that was built by a VC backed Silicon Valley company. Like that's scary to me. But I don't know. That's my that's my hot take. You wanted a hot take. There it is. Hey man, I appreciate it. That's why I went to you for the hot take because I had a feeling that your stance would be in that particular corner. Amel, what do you think? Um, I mean, I think it's very strategic on the part of Astro and Vercel. Um, I mean, React is not the fastest game in town anymore. And I think Vercel really prides itself on being best in class of everything. And so it's kind of silly for them to be like not supporting I, what I think is like a best in class developer uh, framework at this point. And so uh, it's just, it's kind of like a, in that sense, it's like somebody who's like a 10 is marrying somebody who's also a 10, right? It's like two hot people, right? So I, I, I've, I've called Vercel like the like hottie in town like um, a long time ago. I don't remember at some point, some show. Oh yeah, I was talking to Rich Harris and like when Rich Harris like once spelt when the Svelte and Vercel partnership became a thing, I was like, yeah, it's like, that's what it felt like. And so, um, so I think it's strategic on both of their parts. I think it's going to be a symbiotic really like, you know, thing. I think Vercel has reach and distribution and Astro like is a good product. So if with reach and distribution is hopefully a good thing. Um, it, it seems like there's, uh, it's more like a business partnership from a marketing sense, but, um, and, uh, advertising sense, but there's also like the financial aspect is that I think Vercel is going to contribute $5,000 a month towards, um, Astro development, which is great. Yeah. So that's the financial aspect to that relationship. Yeah. We talk a lot about open source funding. Like we, we talked about like Dino's experiment with Dino KV a few weeks ago. Yeah. There's this, there's what happened to Gatsby, you know, all, all of these open source projects, they need funding and, this seems like one of the better ways to do that because as far as I understand, yeah, it's just a partnership and not like a, an ownership type mm -hmm. thing. Um, it makes me feel better as a user of Astro that it's probably still going to, I don't host my stuff uh, on Vercel and everything with Vercel kind of worries me that it's going to be easier. It's just going to be easier. Not that you can't host it elsewhere, but the happy path is always going to be Vercel. And this makes me feel like the happy path will be generally the internet hopefully yeah in my experience in recent history these relationships have been fickle and short-lived i mean we celebrated when zach leatherman was able to go full-time on 11 d because of netlify that relationship has ended he has now moved on the project remains uh, its own standalone project which is great but if we look at the kind of stuff that was being added to 11 d during that time period a lot of what I've read from Zach is that his work going forward is going to be kind of slimming down and reducing 11D's footprint or feature print because there was stuff going in that was, you know, it makes sense. It was like Netlify integrations and stuff. And so that was short lived. Chris, you mentioned the Gatsby one. If I was Fred and the Astro team right now, I'd be like, awesome. We got more money to work with every month. I wouldn't plan on that money being there every month you know, for ongoing beyond, I guess, even what the, whatever the terms of this partnership is, because once you start relying upon that and like, maybe he goes out and hires some people using that money and then that money disappears. And now, now what do we do? So it's a nice shot in the arm uh, from their perspective, but not one that I would, that I would count on if I was in that position. So. I mean, I mean, like in, in all fairness, like, I think that's just, you're just describing the the volatility and the shifting nature of like the web and yeah. companies building for the web and, and teams supporting that experience. So yeah, every, you can't, even within a stable company, you can't like reliably say, you know what you're going to be doing in six months. So it's $5,000 a month. It's just $5,000 a month. Right. Think about that. Like that pays for the blog post, right? That announces it. 
So I don't know. It's not like they can go. You're saying that's in, that's an insignificant amount. Yeah, they can't go hire anybody with that, right? You could hire somebody at five grand a month, couldn't you? I mean, maybe not somebody full time in the U.S. I don't think, but no, well, the Earth is flat. So I mean, surely there's talent all around the world, and you could do a part time hire. I mean, I I don't think five thousand dollars a month is as an open source project is something to balk at. Myself, I would agree. It's also not something to rely on. So. Interesting. I think the key for us as just open source users and community members of the web is we should select tools that we think will continue to exist and improve over time. And so when we see something like this, you wonder like Gatsby, is it, is Gatsby just done then? Or what happened to, I don't know the whole story on Gatsby today. Like, is it the project just over with? Was it picked up by community members? Does anybody know? There was a release last week and the last commit was four hours ago by Renovate. So it's still moving forward in some capacity. Was the last release just Renovate commits? <laughs> <laughs> like, Does Renovate do releases? Yeah. I was going to just say, that sounds like an automated release process. I, I don't know. I I have heard through Twitter that like everybody got laid off who was working on that project. Mm. So who, who's working on the project? And I don't think there's been any like official communication about that it. That makes me so sad. Yeah, that is sad. Well, I just, I do wonder because everybody laid off that was working on that project, did everybody come to that project because of that job or were there people that were working on it anyways or on the side or as a typical open source project and do they continue to be like, well, I'm going to keep working on this or who does the IP? I don't know. I don't know the situation. So maybe we're just, I'm talking out of ignorance here, but does the IP belong to Netlify now? I don't know about the licensing situation in, in Gatsby, but... Assuming there's like a CLA, then yeah, probably they own the IP. No, if I would, but if there if there isn't, then yeah. Well, I think in that case, it's safe to say what Amel said at the beginning that a partnership, the structure as this one seems to be, is a much more stable ground for an open source project than a a ownership stake. So for sure, yeah. And for what it's worth, I just wanted to say. I've heard really great things about Gatsby's internal culture because, you know, like they were also one of the first companies to like start paying people to interview, you know, they'd give you like a take home project and they like cut you a check for it. Like, I don't know, I've heard just tons of really great things. So it makes me sad that their uh, folks are laid off and I hope everybody's landed somewhere good. And just thank you for elevating culture in tech. So. Well, speaking of landing somewhere good, it turns out that Python has landed in Excel. Amel, you wanted to talk about this, and we are here to talk about it. This is tremendously exciting, y'all. Like, think about how much it sucks to write little macros and calculations in Excel, and but also just like Excel is just amazing. And honestly, like we could replace the entire world with like an Excel, Excel sheets, I think, like screw databases, screw web development, like let's just <laughs> use Excel, you know? But yeah, I mean, so now you can basically like use Python right within Excel. So you can just like highlight a cell and then convert it into a like calculate Python and you can format dates. You can, you know, run little algorithms. Like it's just fantastic. So Excel and Python kind of becoming a things that can be used together. It's, I think that's like, I don't know. I think, um, backend developers should just be, they should be worried. You know, that's, <laughs> that's just, just, just saying like, you know, if I, if I could just use Excel and didn't have to build a backend, like, I don't know, you know, it's tempting. Well, Excel is a backend in many cases, I guess maybe not Excel proper, but Google's version of Excel sheets, anything that's Airtable. I mean, you can actually go a really long way without foreign keys and linked relational. Uh, databases and stuff. You can like, a lot of times all you need is a single table with some columns and rows and an API in order to put stuff in and get stuff out. Excel itself, are we talking about uh, an online hosted version of Excel? Are we talking about the one that runs on business people's desktops around the world? Because when I think about like that, I think think the software shops in general will be threatened more than merely backend devs because if you can build your entire system right inside the Excel on your desktop in Python, then, uh, you know, who needs custom software, right? I guess that is custom software. It's just a different kind of custom software. That's how I feel. I think this is actually much more monumental than people are, like, realizing, but... Yeah, I'm looking at it, and it's, it's definitely cool. I think, like, 
I am excited to see what kind of insane hacks people build with this. I'm sure it'll help a lot of people do their job, and I don't care about that. I want to see, like, just insane hacks, like, built into Excel with Python. And then, and then how long till they add JavaScript is what I want to know. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, why would you need JavaScript, though? In the sense that, like, you just need a scripting language to perform tasks. So why... Oh, 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 JavaScript, because people, more people know JavaScript than Python. Duh. Oh, my God. I'm so, I cannot believe I just, like, asked and answered wow. my question. You almost got kicked off the pod for that. I, I'm just like, I cannot believe I said that. Can we just, can we delete this from the show? Can we cut this? Yes, we're going to cut this. Editor, no. please cut, cut, cut. Okay. Please <laughs> I like, leave it in. Because well, I, mean, I love, listen, I love. Why would people want JavaScript? She just said. No. <laughs> no, I love Python. I think that's what it is, guys. I'm sorry. I hate to say this, but honestly, like the Zen of Python is so real. Like it's it's so real, Just, especially with the pollution of TypeScript. Like JavaScript has become less of a yes. Zen programming experience hey, for me. Preach it. You know what I'm saying? Preach. So the Python, the Zen of Python is real. It's real. TypeScript pollution. See, Nick, we were just waiting. Nick was going to say, why are they going to put TypeScript into Excel? <laughs> you know that it's his next line. He's just been over there waiting for a chance to say it. I'm just just appalled over here. My <laughs> mouth is just open. Listen, I did, when I was first learning TypeScript, a developer that I work with, um, I was just like, I was like complaining about something and I was like, WDF. And he was like, listen, TypeScript leaves nothing to the imagination. And, you know, I have forever kind of thought about it that way. Like it really leaves nothing to the imagination. And I feel like with Python, I feel like I can go anywhere, do anything. And guess what? There's one way to do everything. <laughs> My too. code is so ambiguous. It's fine. You, you no, know, it's not even that it's being ambiguous. It's just, it's, it, and, and it, the programming, the language itself is beautiful because there's one way to do, like there's only one way to do X, unlike Perl or like other languages. It's just like where there's like 17 ways to do something, you know? A Python is simple in that in that sense. And so there's a like very little cognitive overhead when you're writing Python. So I, I really appreciate it. Unless I want to mix tabs and spaces. Yeah. See, we, we can't take Nick's opinion of programming language seriously because he's been getting into Lua. Oh, my God. And Lua is one indexed arrays. And so can anybody take it seriously? It's not even zero indexed. I and mean, Lua would be a reasonable thing to, to stuff in Excel, Excel too. Mm -hmm. Lua, yeah, that was, that was, that's why I brought it up. I was kind of thinking that would be a good one. They could change it to A-indexed arrays. Oh. Or they could change it to Z-indexed. Back to the yeah. web. <laughs> Z-indexing, <laughs> right? <laughs> Anyways, so so this Python in Excel is only available in preview right now. And I believe once it's fully rolled out, yeah, I think it'll be available on all, like Excel on your desktop, Excel in the browser. Like I, I, I don't see it being, especially like the built-in functions that, you know, like if you're using a built-in function from Python, there's, you know. Isn't Python one of the languages that uh, OpenAI knows better than most? Is there a correlation there? My tinfoil hat's on now. This is how AGI becomes a thing. Oh, okay. Because you know, <laughs> once it gets into our spreadsheets, man, it's over. Up into our spreadsheets. Well, game over, man. <laughs> game over. That could be a good point. Is it not in our spreadsheets already? Can you not use something to make? Oh, I'm pretty sure it is. I'm telling you, I've never worked at a company. I have worked for like unicorns, multi, multi, whatever, like uh, Fortune, whatever top like public companies. I have never, you know, in startups, I've never worked at a company where like really important information was not stored in Excel uh, and analyzed in Excel. So, you know, just, just putting it out there. I mean, I'm not important, but I haven't had Excel or Microsoft Office installed on my machine in 11 years. <sighs> Man, well, you're a developer, so it's understandable. <laughs> yeah, I mean, numbers then, right? Well, I, I mean, yeah, but I don't use it. I have a very important numbers document <laughs> open right now, which is going to run our business here. It's going to hold the scores <laughs> oh, of headlines.
Okay, I'm here with Moritz Gruber, CTO of KC. Moritz, tell me about how KC gives developers a headless CMS that lets them build with endless possibilities. What do you mean by that? So usually when you start a new project, you pick the technology and then you're limited to whatever you choose in the first place. So if the, in the first place you go on WordPress or Webflow, you're like stuck to what they offer to you. With KC, you building your own front end, you can choose whatever technology you like and you're not learning our system. You just have to use GraphQL and that knowledge is like very powerful because you can transfer it to every other tool and you have the flexibility to connect it to an app, to a website, an e-commerce store. You're not limited to whatever plugin is supported. You can use any e-commerce system and just connect it in your front end together. That's the power of using a headless CMS. Okay. Take me one layer deeper then. So you have framework compatible starter templates. You have an API that allows you to import and export data. You've got UI extensions. What tooling do you all have for developers? Yeah, of course. So the first thing probably when you start a project is you want to import what you already have. So we got you covered importing and exporting data and you can access all of that with an easy to use GraphQL API. We build an SDK on top. You can use in TypeScript that gets you started. And then we also got you covered if the project grows, like you have multiple layers deep of nesting, you have the really big GraphQL queries and we still run them really fast for you. That's our guarantee. And also we got you covered for every new technology that is coming up. There is like a ton of new frameworks like Quick and Fresh of Dino coming, everything, every, every couple of months. Um, but we are there to help you choose whatever is the best solution for you. And you don't have to make compromises on the CMS. Very cool. Okay, the next step is to go to kc.io. That's C-A-I-S-Y dot I-O. And one thing you could try is try it free. Up to three users, two locales, 50,000 entries, 100 gigs of traffic, tons of free forever in their free forever tier. Headless fun, zero cost. Check it out. And for those who want a lifetime 50% off discount code, you can use JS Party to get that. Redeem now, but the discount lasts forever. KC.io. Again, C A I S Y.io. And make sure you tell them the change I'll send you. Now, we don't have a jingle for head lies because I wrote one once and I performed it and K-Ball laughed so hard at me and not with me that I catted it to Dev Null. I want to see it. Can you do it? I've, I've, no, seriously? No, you do Why not. not. I won't laugh. I I'll, I'll mute myself if I laugh. How about that? I won't perform it live, but maybe I'll insert it right here. Aha! I found you, you stinking bug. No, I decided not to. Okay. <laughs> Let's just play this game. So this Head Lies game is Chris's favorite game that we play. It's the only one that he likes. And so we're playing it again in his honor. This is a game of uh, BS detection. This is fake news recognition. What does this have to do with JavaScript and the web, you might ask? Well, it's fun, and web development's also fun. And so that's a correlation that we're going to build. Yeah, that's it, ticket. I have in front of me a handful of headlines gathered from around the web, as well as the first paragraph of each news story. Some of these headlines are 100% true. Others have been fabricated by yours truly. It is your job, should you choose to accept it, to identify what's the headline and what's the head lie. <laughs> I can't even say that with a straight face. It's so good. It's so classic. And we will score points for you. At see who is the best. I'm running out of words here. So this is how it's going to work. I'm going to say the headline. The three of you will all have a chance to identify true or false. Then I will read the first paragraph of the story and you'll have a chance to flip flop your answer to their side. The person who identifies the most correctly wins. If the headline is true, you'll hear this sound. And if the headline is false, you'll hear this sound. Any questions? 
Wait, I, I, I don't remember if we get more points for guessing before the paragraph. We've simplified the rules because it's been pretty complicated in the past. Why don't you just give us the hint all the time? Like, there's no consequence for knowing the hint. I'm going to give you the hint all the time, but you're going to have to guess at first. You're going to guess, then I'm going to give you the paragraph, and then you're going to have a chance to flip-flop. Same points no matter what. It's just more information. Okay, whatever, Jerry. I really wish I didn't skip <laughs> breakfast. You know, I'm just, I feel like mentally underpowered for this. Perhaps we should have discussed this in depth before I the show these are still when I told you guys the rules and asked you if you had any questions. <laughs> okay. Here we go. The very first headline is The FCC agrees with ISPs complaining that listing every fee is too hard. False. Wow. Okay, Chris says false. Nick? False. I'm out. Man, this better be false. If not, like I'm going to be writing a letter to my congressperson. That's I, I really hope that's false. All right. We have three falses. We'll now read the first paragraph of the story. The FCC accepted ISP's request to eliminate an upcoming requirement that they list all their monthly fees saying, quote, every consumer needs transparent information. False. Wait. Uh, anybody like to flip flop? No way. Yeah. No, I'm still saying false. Yeah. I mean, I'm guessing this is going to be true because, I mean, it's so obvious. Like, it has to, you know what? I'm going to flip flop for the game, not because I actually believe it. Somebody has to be the control <laughs> point. Okay. I'm, I, I, I'm going to, yes, of the yes. Game. I'm going to, I'm going to go Mel through. Goes, so you think this is a true headline? Yeah. I mean, this is late stage capitalism after all. So, I mean, you know, it could be true. I, I want to believe that it's false. So I'm going to stay with false. And Chris was just resoundingly on the false side. So, Bone Skull says false. Nick says false. Amel says true. Is it true or false? Checks his notes. That is a head lie. Oh, thank God. It's the exact opposite of what actually happened. The FCC rejected the ISP's complaints that listing every fee is too hard. They said, no, nope, you go ahead and list every fee, you ISPs. Yes. And so. Really, that should be an insult. Good job, Nick. Good job, Chris. Yeah. We will award each of you one point, and Amel has zero. Yeah, that's okay, though. For the love of the game. For the love of the fine. game. Yeah, for the love of not <laughs> winning the game. All right, we've now moved around to leaked meta documents reveal intent to, quote, consume the Fediverse with Threads Federation. Leaked meta documents reveal intent to, quote, consume the Fediverse with Threads Federation. Fe Fediverse or Metaverse? The Fediverse. What is the Fediverse? Mastodon. It's like a, is that a, f oh, okay, okay, okay. What, oh, threads this, oh my God, oh my God. I was just, I was thinking about. <laughs> You're just sitting here watching a male slowly understand what's going on. I, yeah, I was thinking about threads, like I immediately like thought about like concurrency and you know all that stuff and i was like wait what and i was like wait threads there, with a capital I was like, T. decentralization or I, I, yeah i was just my brain was totally off so do you know that threads is going to allegedly federate with other activity pub providers at some point oh i believe that yeah uh, yeah i i i'm gonna say yeah that's a true headline uh chris what do you think i, I guess i'll go with true until i hear the paragraph okay and nick i'm also gonna go with true all right we have three trues the f the first paragraph of the story TechCrunch has acquired emails between meta ceo mark zuckerberg and threads project lead adam moseri that detail a plan to overwhelm the federated social network with users content and quote a global search index <sighs> any flip floppers yeah i'll go false chris has flip flopped the first flip flop, actually, a male flip flop last round. I don't know. I'm I'm now just thinking. I don't know if they'd go for that. I mean, it kind of goes against everything that it stands like. They stand like Mastodon. You don't know who would go for it. The, I guess Adam. Right, Adam, the head of the yes Threads project. Okay, meaning that you don't think they're going to federate, or you don't think they have this intent to overwhelm. That they, that they don't have the intent to like uh, overwhelm and federate. I don't know. Uh, you know what? I'm going to stick with my original answer. I'm okay. just uh, true. All right. So we have true with a Mel. Chris says it's false now. He was once on the true train. Now he's false. Nick, sticking or flipping? Okay. So I don't know anything about this. I know that they intend to, and I think that they should, but I feel like there's a problem with the paragraph. Like the paragraph that you said is a lie. Specifically... Is Adam Asari the head of Threads, or is he the 
like head of Instagram or is there a different, that's, that's mm. where I'm at right now. Like, are you trying to get us on a technicality? Ah, uh, I will tell you that I do know that Adam Mosseri is the head of threads. He might also be the head of Instagram. I don't know their, their org structure at all. Got it. Okay. Uh, then I'm going to stay with true. All right. So Nick thinks this is true. Amel thinks this is true. And Chris thought it was true, but then he skipped it to false. Is this a headline or a head lie? Let's hear that sound. Oh, man, I made it up. I made the whole Seriously? thing up. Seriously? Oh, man. Completely false. I, I, I was kind of, I, I, yeah, I, I, I thought so, but, you know, I didn't. I was just too lazy to change my vote, to be honest. But I did look up the head of uh, threads is Adam Ozeri because I wanted it to sound like it was true. And so I gotcha. So Chris scores because he flip flop to false. Correct, Chris? Yes. And then the other two stayed true. So you both missed. So after two rounds, we have Chris in the lead with two correct answers. Nick has identified one. Amel is 0 for 2. Chris is like the ma master BS detector. He is, man. He's on top of it. That's why he likes this game. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Headline number three. Crime is so bad near San Francisco Federal Building, employees are told to work from home, officials said. True. True, true, true. A lot of confidence there. Nick's a true. Mel's a true. Chris, what'd you say? Oh, yeah. It was, it was Chris and I that voted, I think. Not... Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Nick, what are you thinking? I'll, I'll also say true. Uh, the paragraph is, officials at the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services advised hundreds of employees in San Francisco to work remotely for the foreseeable future due to public safety concerns outside the Nancy Pelosi Federal Building on 7th Street. True. Everybody feel good about mm -hmm. their answers or want to flip flop? Uh, I think that's very true. Um, it was very scary being in SF. Um, yeah, like uh, early spring this year, it was very scary being there. So, yeah. All right, let's find out. Is that a headline or a head lie? That is true. So all three of you successfully identify that as true. Good job. All get a point for round three. Round four, Elon Musk says X will fund legal bills if users are treated unfairly by their bosses. Oh, wow. That's a, I mean, that's such an Elon Musk thing to do. <laughs> I mean, it's so ridiculous. He's the wild card. You never know what he's saying or not. Um, yeah. Yeah, because he's like free speech. But like, what if I get in trouble for being an asshole on the internet? Oh, well, don't worry. We'll cover your legal <laughs> bills. You know, like, yeah. Yeah. I, I You know, I'm going to say true. True. I'm also going to say true. But I think that while he said that, it's completely false. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. He doesn't actually mean it. He's not going to follow through. Yeah. 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 True. Depending on if you made something up in the paragraph. So let's hear it. I want to know. You know what? You know what? You know what? I want to know. I want to know if a tweet can be legally binding. That's what I want to know. <laughs> you know. Not if you have opinions are your own in your bio. Oh, that's you know. Touche, oh, Nick. Good touché. point. Touche. <laughs> what did you say? Opinions are my employers. Is that <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Trouble? Yeah, <laughs> my employer made me say it. Okay. Uh, here's the paragraph. On Sunday, Mr. Musk told users that financial assistance from his platform would have, quote, no limits. He asked users to, quote, let us know if they had experienced unfair treatment for posting or liking something. It's true. Chris, it's true. Nick? Wait, can you can you say the, the title again? Elon Musk says X will fund legal bills if users treat it unfairly by bosses. Okay, I'll keep it as true. Amel? I, yeah, definitely true. I mean, it's it's so ridiculous. That it has to be true. Like, you know, it's how I feel. So ridiculous. It has to be true. But is it actually true? Did he actually say that? Or did I make it up? Whole cloth. It is true. He said that a couple weeks ago. I asked you to repeat the title because I, I was curious if you said Twitter or X and you were trying to get us on that. Oh, I wouldn't be so malicious. You know, <laughs> I fully support X.com. Is this where we start playing DMX? X go give it to you. Wait for you to get it on your own. X go deliver to you. Knock, knock. DMX. <laughs> That's what I was saying. We listened to our show a couple weeks back. I was saying DMX is rolling in his grave right now because he's getting all of his cool songs are getting steamrolled. <laughs> I just I never realized that what DMX was doing on so many songs was barking. Uh, uh, I just I like what, what do you think I he just, was doing? I, Coughing or something up? I had no idea that was a bark. I mean, <laughs> he was just trying to DM he, us on it's X. Just like, Ow, 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 you know? <laughs> Anyways, I'm sorry. Ooh, that would be a cool new feature of X if that was the DM sound anytime someone DM'd you on X. 
<laughs> yeah, there should be like <laughs> ringtones for you. DMs, you know, that's a feature, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Anywho. <sighs> okay, headline number five so far. Oh, wow, there's more. Are, oh, man, we got eight of these. Let's <laughs> keep rolling. It's three to four to two, Chris in the lead. Uh, number five, Douglas Crockford calls JavaScript a smelly language, says it's time for TypeScript. No, he might think that about JavaScript, but he never would recommend TypeScript. I mean, you know what? Is it? I mean, I'm going to say something that is really like really mean, but I'm sorry. Who is Douglas Crockard still relevant? <laughs> <laughs> Crockard? <laughs> Whatever his name is. You know, um, yeah, that JavaScript, the good parts. I used to think it was like just some book that I couldn't understand, but no, it turns out like literally almost everyone finds those marble diagrams confusing and hard to understand, you know? So I just, I have some built up resentment there for just making me feel. What about JSON? You like JSON? No. no. <laughs> Okay, let's get to the paragraph. I want comments and I don't want trailing commas, or I want trailing commas. Here's the paragraph. In an interview with Honeypot, JSON inventor Douglas Crockford calls for developers around the world to stop using JavaScript and start using its natural replacement, TypeScript. <laughs> While you should do that, it is false. <laughs> All right. Uh, no, false. Okay. <laughs> Avel. Um, yeah, I think it's false. You gotta get your official answer. Three falses. You guys just don't believe in the power of tri of TypeScript. It, no, I just I don't think Douglas Crawford I do. would say that. You don't understand the power of the dark side. Yeah, you're right. He would never say that. He did say the first part. He would never say the second part. I just added that myself to make Nick mad. Oh god. <laughs> so so, happy. so so were we wrong or right? No, you're all correct okay. that the answer is false. But but it's partially true. It's partially true, but not not the whole truth. What what what, what was his sentence though? JavaScript is smelly and then what? It's like He did call JavaScript smelly. He he says it's time for us to move on. He didn't name a language to move on to. Maybe it's time for him to move on, you know? It's like Really? <laughs> we need a maybe maybe you know what? Maybe Python needs a good parts book. That would be a good quote to come out of this episode. Amel Hussein calls Douglas Crockford a smelly no. person. Says it's time I to move on. I didn't say that. You said that, but I did partially. And it's partially true. Okay. Let's move on to round six. Everybody is now scoring every round. So uh, the scores remain the same. Someone's gonna have to trick Chris in order for you guys to catch up. Number six, Taylor Swift fans complain of post-concert amnesia. What? Taylor Swift fans complain of post-concert amnesia. You know, I say true. I, I, I own, leave it to the Swifties to, 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 to say some crazy shit like that. You know, my guess is they were, they got really excited and that excitement was created like some kind of a high in their body and they were just paralyzed in the concert and then they just didn't, yeah. I think that's they forgot what happened. They just forgot what happened. Yeah, they're just too like the excitement like overcame them. Okay, so you're going true, Nick. You're you're head nodding. What do you think? I'm gonna go false, and I'm curious what this has to do with JS Party. But Taylor Swift, TS TypeScript. Yeah, I got it. Okay. <laughs> oh my god! I already told you these headlines are fun, and web development is also fun. So they're very related. Uh, Chris, we've got him on either side of the fence on this one. Yeah, uh, uh, let's just say true. All right, so we have true from Chris, true from Amel, false from Nick. The first paragraph is, some Taylor Swift fans are experiencing symptoms of post-concert amnesia as they cannot remember several moments from her era's tour shows that they attended. <laughs> yep. Anybody's changing their answer or want to lock them in? I'm staying with, staying with true. I'm going to Google uh, post-concert amnesia to see the official no diagnosis Googly. here. The WebMD page? <laughs> yeah. Did you go to a Taylor Swift concert? <laughs> Are you between the ages of 11 and 14, you know? All right, everyone's sticking with theirs. So we got uh, Chris and Amel are on true and Nick's on false. All right, is that a true headline or a fake news? That one's true. So oh, Nick falls behind. Yeah, I'm sad. I'm, I'm sad that you're you fall behind, Nick. Uh, Nick, just copy just copy Chris from now on. <laughs> After six rounds, Amel has four, Nick has four, and Chris has six. So a commanding lead with only two rounds to go. You have to make up both of these points here in order to catch him. Number seven. The NSA orders employees to spy on the world with dignity and respect. 
<laughs> Number seven, the NSA orders employees to spy on the world with dignity and respect. Let's go to Chris. Your thoughts? Uh, I'm, I'm going to go false. Okay. Nick? False. False. I'm out. I'm going to say true until I hear the paragraph because I, I feel like that, that line that you just said, it, it's kind of, it's prime for like, um, what do you call clickbait? You know, where like they, you know, like it seems like a clickbait title where it's true, but in, but it seems out of context. So, um, Jerry okay. couldn't say it without chuckling. Well, yeah. true or false. It's funny yeah. either way. So let's hear the first paragraph. The national security agency, the shadowy hub for the United States electronic and cyber spying has instructed its employees that foreign targets of its intelligence gathering quote, should be treated with dignity and respect end quote, according to a new policy directive. Yeah. As I said, I think it's taken out of context. I'm going to say true. A male goes with true. I'm going to distinguish myself and say false for the game, for the game, <laughs> for the game. <laughs> And Chris previously said false, and he is what? Sticking or flipping? True. He flip-flopped. He's going true. Oh, I think Chris is just copying. He's just, he just knows as long as he ties you guys from here on out, he, he wins no matter what. So he's playing the game. But, yeah, I can't because, Nick, if you two pick the same one, then, I, like, whatever. But right. So uh, you didn't. Right, true. But they didn't. They're on either side, so... Okay. Is this true or is this false? That one's true. Yeah. I knew it. I knew it. Well, thanks for playing, everybody. And I don't believe it was taken out of context. I think that's exactly what they said. Well, no, they, but they but they omitted um, a part of the sentence, which is the, for, you know, like, like they basically skipped to the end. Like, Should be treated with dignity and respect. That sounds like a register headline. Is that from the register? Yeah. <laughs> Does that uh, it's from The Intercept. All right, so Chris gets it, Amel gets it, Nick falls in the last. So you're, you're you should be very grateful, guys, because I just like stopped myself from like saying something that would have probably gotten this um, podcast like a rated R or something, you know. Well, thank you. We appreciate yeah, it. You're welcome. I was you're... gonna I was gonna make up this really funny register headline about Elon Musk, but I'm not gonna do it because it's inappropriate. Okay. And really, I should know better. We'll leave that yeah. as a. Plus yes. plus. Oh, Get yeah. your plus plus. <laughs> Save it for a plus plus bonus. No. Okay, fine. It's fine. Keep private. <laughs> Only amongst us friends. Okay, we'll keep that for plus plus people. If you want to hear a Mel's dirty <laughs> Elon Musk fake headline that's going to be rated R, sign up for Changelog plus plus. Okay, last one, last round. This is an anonymous listener. Oh, shoot, I can't say that. <laughs> I can't say a listener came up with this. We're going to skip that one. Oh. oh. <laughs> because I just gave it the answer. Anonymous <laughs> listener? But I mean, why does it, why does it matter if, that if our listeners... All listeners are anonymous. It, it, it could, the listener could be giving you false information. Okay. But I mean, maybe not. This was submitted by an anonymous listener. Citing Red Hat's open source restrictions, Microsoft commits to joining Open ELA with OpenSUSE and Oracle. False. Um, I don't know what any of that means. What is an ELA? What you can, Electronic licensing agreement. Open ELA is the Enterprise Linux Association. Oh, 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 okay, okay. I was like electronic licensing agreement. Um, okay. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know about this one. I'll say true. We had a false, a true, false, and a false. Here's the paragraph. Microsoft announced Wednesday that they will be joining the Open. Enterprise Linux Association, along with OpenSUSE and Oracle, a representative for Microsoft, refer to their open source initiatives around .NET and Azure as, quote, a market leader in technology that helps enterprises thrive. Microsoft is committed to not standing in the way of innovation or security. Anybody convinced in the other direction? Plausible. But I'm not, I'm not going to change. I think I still think it's false. But he's going to stick with it. Amel? Um, <laughs> your stance. sorry, I was just... Um, What's your stance? Oh. Um, yeah, I, I'd say uh, false. Oh, no, wait. True, true. I said true already. I think it's true. I'm just asking where your stance is right now. Okay, false, true, and then Nick. What did I say before? False. <laughs> what did I say before? I don't remember. That's why I'm asking <laughs> oh, you again. God, I thought I was the only one on quote-unquote vacation. I'm going on vacation next <laughs> week, so I'm, I'm there. Okay. <laughs> so Chris says false. Amel says true. What are you going to say, Nick? I'm going to say false. False or True. 
That headline was made up by an Ooh. anonymous listener. That's why I thought I ruined it by saying that, because I thought for sure you guys would think they made it up. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it does make sense. Like, I can't see, like, Microsoft, I mean, them, like, joining the Linux Foundation was, like, revolutionary a few years ago. Um, so I can't see them, like, then, like, further cozying up with big wigs like Red, Red Hat. So I don't know. It's like not, it's, it's like in opposition to Red Hat. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Which, yeah, that's why I thought it might be plausible because like, I do think it's plausible, right? Microsoft doesn't have any love for IBM. Right, right, right. All right. Well, you guys managed to escape. And that is to say, Chris managed to escape as the victor. Pew, 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 pew. Nick, with that correct final answer, scoots his way back into second place. And Amel ends up then... At the bottom of the barrel. I'm the loser, baby. And then I can't, don't remember the rest of the lyrics, but like. Well, that's good because it gets it gets, it gets quite really? a bit more remorse, remorse, remote. What's the word? Morbid. Sorry, morbid okay. from there. And thus ends America's favorite JS Party podcast game. I'm sorry, Chris's favorite JS Party podcast yeah. game show. Yeah, I love playing head lice. Head lice. <laughs> You're good at it, man. I think. Did yes. you get them all right? Did you get a single one wrong? Yeah. You're eight for eight. So here's the thing, and this is going to be some constructive criticism, some some feedback. This is a oh, gift from me to you. Not interested. The, the ones that are false should be like completely made up because you take like part of the headlines and you change it. But if we've seen those, it's going to be easy to know which one is which. And so apparently I read way too much tech news. And so I see that. Now, right. if you had made up stuff like completely out of the blue, I would have no idea. Well, I did. But you didn't because you took existing headlines and just kind of changed them to make them false. The leaked meta documents reveal intent to consume the Fediverse. That's completely made up. I just completely made it up okay. out of whole cloth. But the one that I did change was the Douglas Crockford one where it says TypeScript right. at the end. So I changed that one. And the FCC one you changed as well. But just I'm just saying that... I'm just saying that those are easier. Oh, the FCC one. I changed the FCC one, yes. You got the Taylor Swift one right, Chris. Where do you get your Taylor Swift news? I have an 11-year-old daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Valid. Did you hear about that? Did you hear about that amnesia thing? Um, or did you just know? Because I knew it was true based on just how Swifties are. They're just like... I feel like I was like on like a, I don't know, some sort of article and then like you scroll to the bottom and then you see the more, more junk that you, we want you to click on. Right. I think I might've seen it in there. Yes. Yeah. You see the native, the native advertising. I think that's what it's called. Native advertising. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, there was another Taylor Swift one that I thought about covering where it was that in Seattle, the number of people at the tour actually caused a mini earthquake. Did you guys <laughs> oh see that one? God. I did hear about that. I did hear about that like the foot stomping yeah. in the stadium caused like some yes, reaction the foot stomping caused an that's earthquake that's so wild that is apps i didn't even know humans could do that like that's crazy if we put our heads together and we put our feet together you know we can we can make the <laughs> we can move the earth we can make the, the world change oh my god i saw beyonce live a few weeks ago and that's how i felt after leaving that concert i was like wow when humans are collectively organized and put their energy towards something this is the greatness that they can create. Like I was, I left that show very inspired about like what humans can do once we're focused and we all get along, you know? So, yeah. Well, Chris, your, your feedback is well taken. I think that to respond, it is much more difficult to come up with them out of the blue than it is to take something that's partially ridiculous and change it to be false. So that's why I have a mixture. Yeah, that meta one was hard because like I didn't, it was just like, I had no, frame of, right you know i said to guess it's good feedback you know if, if i'm gonna stump you in the future i'm gonna have to work a lot harder that's what you're saying and i'm willing to put the work in so we will come back for another round of headlines soon uh, but you do get the final word that's what you've won today you can say the last thing on the podcast before we say goodbye so here you are chris here's your moment you've won headlines you're the champ one thing to say to the jazz party audience before we call the show i don't want to say anything all right, that is Jay's party for this week. I'm Jared uh, with Nick and Amel and Chris, who doesn't want to say anything. So, of course, we're going to honor that request. Uh, we'll talk to you on the next one. All right, that.
that's our show for this week. Thanks for partying with us. If you like our Head Lies game, there's more like this at jsparty.fm. And if you don't like this particular recurring segment of ours, let us know in the comments. There's a link in your show notes. We'd love to hear from you. We'd also love for you to share JS Party with your friends who might dig it. Word of mouth is still the number one way people find new podcasts they love. Thanks again to our partners, Fassy.com, Fly.io, and Typesense.org. And to our official beat partner, Breakmaster Cylinder. Next up on the pod, Ron Paris joins Amel and Chris. Ron is a security engineer at Reddit, and they'll be talking best practices and common pitfalls. Stay tuned right here. We'll have that episode ready for you next week. Douglas Crockford calls JavaScript JavaScript. <laughs> hey, JavaScript. So it's time. Oh, JavaScript. <laughs> I love me some JavaScript. You ask a wee wabbits and you oh JavaScript. Yes, you silly wabbits. <laughs> Elmer Fudd says JavaScript smelly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, okay. We're going to break Brownies the show. for Sorry. breakfast or what? <laughs> <laughs> no comment. I'm on vacation. No comment. No comment. Okay.